Hi, welcome. Welcome, everybody. My name's Carla. Welcome to our virtual information session for our online Master of Public Health at FIU. We're just going to give you a few more moments to connect. I know some of you are still connecting your audio, so we'll just give you some time to go ahead and do that. Welcome to FIU's virtual information session for our 100% online Master of Public Health. My name is Carla Maria, and I am part of the FIU online team at the university. I've been a part of FIU for over 10 years, and it's my pleasure to be at this event with some of my colleagues whom you will get to work very closely with if you decide to join the MPH program. First, we have Dr. Yasenka Peterson, Director of Online Master of Public Health and Director of Educational Programs and Workforce Development at the Robert Stemple College of Public Health and Social Work. Dr. Peterson, would you like to say hello to our future students and our future Panthers? Absolutely. Welcome. Um, I hope you all are doing well. We're glad that you're here uh, with us and hopefully we can answer some questions for you while you're trying to make an important decision, um, the decision that's best for you. If at any time after the meeting you have any question, you have my information right there. I'm your contact person. I'm really good with email. Um, just send me an email with questions or if you want to talk, happy to just send me an email and we can set up a time. Um, but I welcome you and would like to give, you know, any information uh, you need. But I do want to introduce somebody else who's not on this list, Dr. Jason Forbes, who just started with us today with an online MPH. He graduated, uh, he has a PhD in health policy management, and he is a faculty now with the online MPH program. So it's his first day with us, and I want to welcome him. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Thank you, Wen. Welcome, Dr. Forbes. This is phenomenal. The MPH team at FIU keeps on growing. And with us today is also Dr. Susie Gomez, Assistant Dean for the Office of Student and Alumni Affairs at the Robert Stemple College of Public Health and Social Work. Dr. Gomez, would you like to say hello to our future Panthers? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you all for being with us this evening. We're so excited that you could join us and we look forward to sharing some important information about the program and how to get you through uh, the application process so that you can officially become a, a Panther with us. And uh, I'm very fortunate to lead a wonderful team, including Mr. Jose Candelaria and Ms. Fiorella Suyon, who you will hear from very shortly. Um, and, uh, and we all look forward to working with you to make your time here at Stemple College a successful one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. And as Dr. Gomez just mentioned, we also have with us Jose Candelaria, manager and recruiter for the, for the admissions operations at the Robert Stemple College of Public Health and Social Work. Jose, would you like to say hello to the future FIU MPH Panthers? Of course. Thank you, Carla. Yes, as, as Carla mentioned, I am the manager and recruiter, so I recruit for all of our programs here. And uh, one thing I really want you to uh, really get from this is that, yes, we're here talking to you about a, uh, um, a very specific program, but we're here for all of our students from the beginning as you start as a new student all the way through your academic career and as you graduate and move on to your, to your actual careers. We're here for all of our students, whether present or future, present, and our alumni. So uh, we're here for you for any questions or uh, uh, concerns you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. And with us today is also Fiorella Sujon, Public Health Admissions Coordinator. Fiorella, would you like to also say hello to our future Panthers? Hello, everyone. My name is Fiorella Sujon. I am the Public Health Admissions Coordinator here at Stample College. And I'm here to assist you during the application process. And if you guys have any questions, you are on the script area. 
Thank you. Thank you, Fiorella. Thank you. And I have to mention that Irene Abad is also part of the MPH team, and Irene helps manage the Robert Temple College of Public Health scholarships. So if you decide to join the program, you'll also get to work with Irene and hopefully benefit from some of our scholarships. Well, now that you learned a little bit about each of us here today, um, really, the we also want to learn about you. So we want to know why you're here, why you're considering getting your master's degree, and particularly your master's in public health. So we ask you this, what is your reason to pursue your degree? And I guess if you can share some of your reasons in the chat, we'd love to, 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 to hear what you have to say. And I guess in the meantime, Dr. Peterson, what have been some of the reasons you have heard from our current and our past students as to why they decide to join the MPH program? Um, I, the, the main one that there's two main ones, career advancement that people want to move up, but mainly it's the passion that people start. It starts always with the passion and helping people. We are a, a profession where people go in naively, not naively, um, sounds a little tubby, but people really go in because they want to make a difference in people's lives. We do change lives. Um, so those are the main ones, but people have other, other uh, reason, intellectual growth. I had somebody who was really didn't want to change career, who really wanted to learn more, especially when COVID was around, learn more about public health in general. Um, th this program has, of course, also in leadership skills, but that is mostly more on the lower end. It's really passion and um, in uh, income and salary increase and career advancement. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Peterson. And we have some of you are sharing in the chat. Karen is sharing that Karen is interested in the program for career advancement and passion. That makes 100% sense. And Megan is sharing that Megan is interested in the program to improve hiring prospect, career advancement, and promotion and passion. So you know what? I think it's it's more than one reason to want to pursue a master's degree and not any master's degree, but really the master's in public health to help make that impact and that difference in absolutely every aspect of our community. So thank you for being here and thank you for sharing your reason and your purpose and your why. And for those of you who may be outside of the South Florida area and maybe you're unfamiliar about FIU, so FIU, Florida International University, is the public research university in Miami, Florida. And we're part of the state of Florida State University system. And we offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs in many different disciplines, including public health. And some of our biggest pride points are that we currently have over 56,000 students enrolled across all of our on-campus and online programs, and we've graduated over 275 alumni across all of our colleges. And we currently offer, as a university, 281 bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. FIU also happens to be the number one public institution in the United States to offer bachelor's and master's degrees to Hispanic students. And at FIU, from the very beginning, we've always catered to extremely busy students. So for us as an institution, it's very important that our programs are flexible and accessible. And we've created online programs at the university. And really our purpose, our mission, with our online programs is to connect our FIU students and our lifelong learners to the best online educational experience, regardless of where you may be located or whether you work best at two in the morning or at 2 p.m. So we wanna be there for you. And I have to say that when you decide to join the online master's in public health, you're joining the FIU online community and that's a community that has graduated over 10,000 students fully online. We currently offer over 100 fully online programs. And also, FIU is the number one university in the United States to offer Quality Matters certification. And what that basically means is that our fully online programs and courses 
provide an effective and engaging experience for our learners. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Dr. Peterson for her to share more about our Robert Temple College of Public Health and Social Work. I think Dr. Gomez is gonna talk as our assistant dean a little bit more about the college. Go ahead, Susie. Yes, thank you so much. So I do wanna talk a little bit about our college, which is a very special college here at the university. So, um, so our college has four main pillars. Uh, we have, of course, public health, uh, we have social work, we also have dietetics and nutrition, and we have our uh, Academy for International Disaster Preparedness. So all great opportunities and, and the purpose of all of our programs is really to promote the greater good. So it is a really exciting place to be where we're really just making sure that um, we're, we're helping people and we're helping our community be at its, at its very best. Um, so all of our programs are actually very highly ranked. So if, as you can see, uh, we're number 39 among public health um, institutions, or public, he uh, public, public health institutions. Um, our social work program is also very highly ranked. Uh, we are very highly funded in terms of research. So there are a lot of great things that are, that are going on here. Our dean likes to say we're small but mighty. So we are one of the smaller colleges at the, at the institution, but there are a lot of really exciting opportunities going on here. And a little bit about um, the college and the program itself, we do have that, um, that really perfect um, student to faculty ratio so that students really have the opportunity to learn from their faculty. We're very diverse. We have faculty who have really great uh, experiences in their fields and who are the cutting edge of research and have these really amazing experiences that they can share with, with their students. Um, great internship opportunities, great opportunities for you to get involved um, in, in your practicum for your MPH and get involved and really learn hands-on. And, and of course, reputation and rankings. And as I mentioned, our research portfolio is really, really impressive. And uh, But more than anything, we do have that very strong commitment to, to the community. So that's what makes us a really special place. And I mean, these are all things that make us, uh, that, that make uh, the Semple College a, a special place to be. But but I really think that that commitment to the community is really important. And this being an, an online program really shows that uh, commitment to the wider community overall. So we really encourage you to you know, continue to learn more about our program and to ask any questions that you may have. But for now, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Peterson to talk a little bit about the program itself. Okay, thank you. A uh, couple of facts, just wanna give you a little, a uh, couple of facts about the program. Of course, it's a master's in public health by our accrediting body, SEEP. Um, we have one, uh, Stample College has one MPH, has one master's in public health. So you'll hear us refer to our different programs as concentrations. So the online program is a generalist program. It doesn't have a specific focus, but it gives you a well-rounded uh, content area. So we have the Masters of Public Health, all Masters of Public Health, by definitions, are practice degrees. So this is not a research degree. It really prepares you to practice in, in the public health field. A couple of facts about the program. It is possible to complete it in as little as 12 months. We tend to call it the accelerated program just because you go faster. It's the same 45 credits, um, but it is possible. I need to know as soon I serve as the advisor for um, all of you. We do, especially the first meeting, we talk about the program again, so you'll hear some things again. Um, and then also immediately then you need to let me know and you know, I'll ask you, what are you, do you have in mind? Um, and then we take it from there. So if somebody wants, and we have several people who really come in and just want to do three semesters and then we schedule, there's no wiggle room. We schedule the courses right there. Um, and then they can be done, uh, in, uh, three semesters. So our program, all our concentrations, the generalist do is 45 credits, uh, 15 courses. All our courses are three credits. The way our program uh, works, it's a completely asynchronous program, which for especially for people who have other commitments, probably such as yourself, that's why you're looking at some flexible program um, that, that where you don't have to be face-to-face, -face. Um, this works wonderful. So it's our regular faculty, our regular adjuncts, it's not SOP, it's our regular faculty, but we use Canvas, we use the platform Canvas, the information is there, you have a faculty assigned, you're not on your own, it's not a distance, you know, education program where, you know, here, read, we have the faculty, the only thing is there's no lecture that's delivered. Um, so it's complete, there's no required time. So when you come in, 
Um, first day of class, the information shows up, you have your modules, you have the assignments, um, and you have the faculty who welcomes you, but there's no like Tuesday night seven through Zoom. The faculty do, they are available, they're available to help. They, uh, many of them have weekly or bi-weekly Zoom session for those who want to attend and usually they record it so it's available to other people. Um, but really there's no specific time that you have to attend. So that works really well for majority of uh, people who attend. Uh, the hour tuition is a little different. We wanna make sure that people know we're a little bit more expensive. We end up being probably $60, $70 more uh, per credit than the regular program because we are a self-supported program. Uh, in the it, summarizing it, when the program was approved, there was uh, the state of Florida, the Board of Governors um, approved it as self-supporting. So your tuition goes in a separate pot. We're not allowed to make money. We're not allowed to lose money. You know, we run the program from that, uh, from that, uh, from the tuition. So it's six hundred dollars per credit. It's not per semester. It's not like in the undergrad where you you know you take twelve to eighteen. It's a fee. it really is six hundred dollars per credit, and it includes all the required fees. So there's no hidden fees. There's no nothing. It's six hundred dollars per credit, and it's based on how many courses you take. For the fall, we have two start dates. We start um, fall and spring. We don't do summer, uh, but for to start in the fall. Um, you have to apply by June 1st, and our fall semester start August 21st. Um, the next slide, please. So the program here, we wanted to just, we had, um, we have an alumni board, so we have a mission where we really want to prepare students to become successful, well-rounded health public health practitioners, um, where you have the knowledge, skills to work in interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary public health settings. And as you know, public health is a very broad uh, profession. So you'll be working with different professions all over. So really, um, our student body is very representative of, of um, the field. We have students who just completed their undergrad and we have people who've been in the field uh, for many years from all different uh, professional backgrounds. Uh, so the program really will focus on the program really prepares you to work in diverse communities as uh, is in public health, uh, to be able to communicate health information effectively. And as we said, work in the professionally uh, and advocate to sex successfully for uh, public health. All our public health, just giving you an idea, just showing you what the courses are, all our uh, concentrations, no matter what, take the first public health core courses. So you have an intro to public health epidemiology where they look at disease transmission. We have an introduction to public health policy and management. We're really looking at policy, health policy and national and international, how our system works. Um, and Dr. Forb just graduated from that program. Um, we have entered environmental health sciences, really looking at how the environment really um, affects people's health. We do have the public health statistics, very important. How do you interpret data? It's not a statistician, you're not becoming a statistician, but really know when you read research, when you read stats, when you read have data, how do you interpret, what does it mean? Um, and our uh, last one of the core courses, not least important, is health behavior. Really understanding at the basis of everything we do, you need to understand what motivates people, what doesn't, what you know doesn't motivate. Why do we do the things we know we shouldn't do and vice versa. So those are the five courses where we meet our 22 CIF competencies. What makes us different than other program is our core, if you're the second um, uh, row there, is our core courses. For the generalist program, we go a little bit more in depth about um, the different fields. So we have, you have also have a data management course where after you have the basic statistics, now what do you do with it? How do you analyze the data? Um, using, we use SPSS because it's usually the ones that's uh, most accessible. How do you interpret it? What does it mean? And hopefully you never have to calculate those data by hand. Then we have health demography, really look at settings, look at birth, death rate, and how it affects your population, which are whatever your population, wherever it might be. Um, community health promotion planning at the basis of what we do, how do you uh, effectively uh, plan a program? There are steps you go through. You got this fall, we start the new curriculum where we have the two, the last two courses we incorporated. We taught for people who come into the generalist program and actually I believe I'll 
call it everybody who gets an MPH need to have a management and leadership, um, some background in that. So we added that course and we added a course in health communication, really preparing you really for when you're out there, how do you lead your, um, your agency? How do you communicate with your workers, with the communities effectively? So those are the required courses. There is two more and I'm gonna skip elective courses and I'll come back to it. All our programs, all our concentrations, because the MPH is a practice degree, you don't have a thesis, yeah, you're culminating, your thesis is your practicum. There's 200 hours that you have to complete. We guide you. Um, the field is very broad. You all have different commitments, so we work with you. And you all are all over. We have five people who are uh, international students. So people are literally all over the world. So we work with you to identify settings where you can complete um, the practicum. And then you have a culminating experience, which you do the follow semester, the seminar. So those are required of all students. The elective courses, there is, um, we actually have biostats too also, but nobody, thank you. Uh, in my three and a half years I've been here, we had one person ask for that. So these are the elective courses that it's time that we offer. Not all are offered every semester. So usually it's where, when we create your plan of study, where it falls, what we offer um, from those courses, you make selections. So you have to take three elective courses um, for the program. So that is the, the structure of the program. And if you have any question, like I said, please, please, please feel free to reach out um, at any time also. Um, to them. Thank you. There is the next slide. Just want to tell you there is two certificates. We have more certificates. Kind of like when you were on the grad, like a minor, we have certificates where if somebody really wanted a focus area, more direct focus area, I think that's the best of both worlds. You have the planning, you have the data managers, you have the generalist program, but then there's two areas that we can, you can take this certificates online. Like I said, we have more, but they're not fully online, but we have two that you can complete completely online. Uh, asynchronous is the epidemiology and epidemiology. So if somebody is interested, um, it only takes one additional course. We double dip and we replace your electives. So we'll talk about it. If you decide you want to join us and you're interested, I'm your person, just ask me how it works. But instead of 45 hours, that would be 48 hours um, that you would have to take. And you would graduate then with an MPH plus a certificate in the area. So we have epidemiology and environmental health sciences. Those are the two that you can complete com online completely with your MPH. For those, um, my colleague who is not here today, but Zoraya Gayo, who worked really close, we worked really close, um, sends out many, if you decide to come email reminding you after your first semester, let me know that you wanna add a certificate and we guide you all through that. And we add it and then we create a plan for you. Um, based on information that you provide when you want to finish, or some people come in and they know that by this day, they want to be done. Um, then I create a plan backwards for them. Say, okay, if you want to be done by this day, this is what your semesters would look like. And the sequence of courses, other people come in and, you know, they, they have busy lives. Um, they want to take two courses, they, whatever it works, then we create it that way. The, for us, what's important is for you to be uh, successful doesn't help us whatsoever to just get you in and then you don't um, finish so really it is what works for you uh, the only uh, deadline there is for FIU you have to graduate within six years that that you start after you start so that's the only push that you'll get if and actually if you take one class a semester a semester you can still finish then. So it's whatever works for you. We work really close um, to make sure that you take the number of courses that allows you to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. And talking about being successful, as Dr. Peterson was mentioning, we, we want you to complete your MPH program and not only earn your degree, but really be ready for the workforce. We want you to be career ready. And when you become a part of the online Master of Public Health program, you will be able to benefit from the Career Engage program. And what this is, is that it basically allows you to receive a $200 scholarship 
towards the cost of earning a certification. Um, so oftentimes industry certifications, when you go and take an exam, there's a cost to it. So we want to be able to provide a $200 scholarship to cover, to help cover the cost of that um, certification exam. So again, we want you to get your degree. We want you to get any industry certifications that you may be interested in. And just keep in mind that you must complete the certification um, requirement while you're still a student prior to graduating. And that's so that we're able to give you that $200 scholarship. But in addition to helping you get certifications, Career Engage also allows you to participate um, in LinkedIn learning courses. So if you don't have LinkedIn, you should get on it right now. And then you'll also see that on LinkedIn, there's tons of LinkedIn learning courses that provide different overviews and preparations for different sets of skills. So you will have access to these courses. It will be, it's part of your FIU online MPH experience. But then also through Career Engaged, you'll be able to work with the Career Engaged instructor and you'll be able to have support creating your own professional statement to define what your goals are, what your career plan is, and how you can get there. So again, we want you to earn your MPH degree, but then we also want you to feel confident and ready for your next career steps. And in addition to that, if you decide to join the online MPH program, FIU Online also has a series of scholarships, which you may be able to benefit from if you start in August 2023. So we actually have three different scholarships. Our first scholarship is our FI Online Corporate and Community Scholarship. It's a $2,000 award and it goes to a select number of employees or members of organizations making an impact in our different communities and industries. And I I have the, the 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 hunch that if you're interested in the MPH program, I'm sure you're already working on something of impact. So we want you to apply to the scholarship. We also have our FIU Online Academic Merit Scholarship. This is also a $2,000 award and it awards a select number of students with high academic achievements at the point of being admitted. So if you have a high GPA from your undergraduate, from your bachelor's, we really want you to apply to this scholarship. Then we also have our FIU Online Get Started Scholarship. It's a $1,000 award, and it's awarded to a select number of students who may be facing a hardship, any sort of hardship. So we know that you may be facing different challenges currently. So if you're facing some sort of challenge, we also want you to apply to the scholarship because there is help for you. And just some numbers to kind of share the, the, the impact of our scholarships. Over the past three years, we've awarded over $200,000 in scholarship awards to over 100 students. And I have to say that many times I meet prospective students and they're kind of discouraged about applying to the scholarships because they're not necessarily guaranteed for every single student. But my answer is always the same. And it's that you should definitely apply to the scholarships because you actually may be awarded, you may be selected. And the process to apply to the scholarships, it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. You first apply to the online MPH program. Then once you're admitted into the online MPH program, you see that website at the bottom of your screen, fiu.academicworks.com. You hop on that website, you create a student account I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really simple. You create an account and then you look for scholarships and you apply. Some of these may require you to upload your resume and you can just use the same resume that you used um, for your application. And I also have to mention that on that scholarship, um, on that scholarship website, that is FIU's scholarship portal. So you're gonna find these three scholarships, but you're gonna find tons of other scholarships and you should definitely browse through them, see which ones you may be eligible for, and then just apply to the different um, options and opportunities that may help you complete your degree. And as a student in the online and page program, you also have the ability to apply to federal financial aid. 
So if you decide to diff, to apply for federal financial aid, it's actually pretty straightforward. To the the steps to apply are going to fafsa.gov or my student aid mobile app. You can apply through those means and you can apply at least two months prior to the term you wish to start. So we're talking about if you want to start in August, then you should apply around June, June, the the late, I, I wouldn't, I would, you know, I would, the earlier, the better, right? Now, keep in mind, you're going to need the FIU federal school code. Every university and college has a federal school code. This is FIU's, it's 009635. So you're going to use that school code to apply for the federal financial aid. And also just so that you're ready, you're going to need your tax information from 2021. So to apply to the 2023 through 2024 FAFSA, because the university um, and the and the financial aid years begin in summer. So to apply to 2023, 2024 FAFSA, you're going to need your 2021 tax documentation. And you, if you apply for the aid, uh, the different aid options include grants, scholarships, loans, which you do have to pay back the loans and funds for books. So just keep that in mind. And there's also additional funding opportunities through the Stemple College. So would, would you like to share a little bit more about these funding opportunities? Yes, of course. So thank you so much, Carla. So I really want to point everyone to the link that's at the bottom of, of this slide. So that is our funding your education page. So if you go to stemple.fiu.edu and then go to students, there's a link that's specifically for funding your education. So we try our best to list any opportunities that we come across and kind of um, kind of help them to be kind of like a one stop shop for students who are looking for for assistance. So we do have our own college uh, scholarships. So you'll see uh, kind of like a different uh, different opportunities that are that are listed there. They are um, merit scholarships, they are awarded on a competitive basis, and there are very, several different types of opportunities that are available there. We also list external funding opportunities, and those will of course also vary quite a bit. And we do, um, we do categorize them by um, by area of study, we do categorize them by you know scholarships for international students, scholarships specifically for online students, um, you know scholarships that you know that will match with your race or ethnicity, uh, scholarships that really for for all sorts of different things. So we really encourage you to to go through all those different opportunities and apply to as many as you can because you don't you, you won't receive the opportunity unless you actually apply for it so we always encourage students to just apply for as many things as possible sometimes certain awards uh, you may be able to stack them sometimes you may not but it's always a great idea to kind of expand your opportunities as much as you possibly can so we always encourage you to apply for as many things as you can and as many things as you're eligible for um, and then I do have, uh, we do have uh, my colleagues information there, Ms. Irina Bad. If you have any questions specifically about funding, if you would like someone to review your essays before you apply for a scholarship, she is the person for you to contact. So definitely feel free to, to reach out to us, but definitely make sure that you go through and explore that website in detail and, and see what applies to you and go ahead and, and make sure you complete those applications. The earlier, the better. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Gomez. Those are great words of encouragement for our future, our future students. And now we have also our admissions and application information that we'd love to share with you. Fiorella, would you like to share with our future Panthers what they have to do to be admitted into the online MPH program? Yes, of course, Carla. Thank you. So uh, our mission and application. So our application process, everyone needs to complete a SOHOS application by June 1st for the semester to start on um, fall 2023. So that completes SOFAs, um, the FIU graduate admissions supplemental fee payment needs to be completed on June 1st and submit all your admissions documents. So the admissions documents that you need to submit as official transcripts from previously attending institutions. If you're an international student, you must submit a WES evaluation course by course, everything through SOFAs, your personal statement, your resume, your three letters of recommendation. If you're an international student, you must submit your TOEFL scores directly to SOFAs and also a certified of copy of your diploma. And the admissions requirements, application, um, a bachelor's degree uh, with a 3.0 GPA in the last 60 credits of upper division coursework. International students, like I said, a West evaluation of your transcripts um, be submitted directly to SOFAs. If you're an international student, uh, a TOEFL exam, 
had 80 score for internet based, uh, paper score for 550, and IELTS exam at 6.5. And we're also taking Duolingo and 105 score for fall 2023 admissions. And if you guys have any questions in regards to our programs and admissions requirements, I will leave my information in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Fiorella. And now, talking about questions, we want to invite you to go ahead and share your questions today. Um, I have to mention that you can share your questions with us today now, but actually we are available um, after the session to connect with you, connect one-on-one -on -one if, if you have any questions that may come up. We know that um, you may not necessarily think of everything right now. So feel free to either share your question via chat or open up your microphone or your camera and go ahead and share any doubts you may have so that we can square them away for you. All right, let's see. Let's see what questions come in. Okay, one of the questions that came in from Giovanni via chat, uh, Giovanni is asking if any entrance exams are required, such as the GRE. We do not require um, the GRE anymore. I think it's been about two years now. Um, if for whatever reason you've taken it, you think you wanna submit it to solidify your application, you can, but it's not required. Okay, that's great. I'm, I, I, I know that that will make the process easier as far as applying. You know, we really look at the application holistically, like we talk about. So they, if, um, you know, the, the one of the things, of course, your references, we need to look at, we look at the references, your statement purpose. Why do you, you know, why, why, why is the program right for you? What motivates you? And also why FIU, you know, why do we meet, you know, meet your needs? Um, if the upper, and like Fiorella was saying, the last 60, the admission requirement is the last 60 uh, credits that you've taken in undergrad, you need to have a 3.0. If you're close, if it's below, um, please let me know. You know, there's a point where, you know, when we're looking at the whole application, we really do look at the whole at the application as a whole. But there's a point that no matter if everything is good, if it's too low, we're not going to set you up for failure. You know, we're not going to admit you. It's not that we're better than anybody. Really, um, it is if we don't think you can be successful, we'll give you feedback. You're more than, please email me. Uh, we can talk uh, if you have questions. But really, it is you making your case. Things happen. We know that. Life happens. But at the same time, we want to make sure that once we make a commitment to you, it's really that we believe that, you know, we have the resources to help you be um, successful. And talking about, you know, things happening and life happening and obstacles coming up, um, Giovanni also is sharing, um, I've been away from the workforce for over two years now, and I want to go back to college. Would I still be eligible to apply being that I've been away uh, from working? Oh, absolutely. It, uh, working, being in the workforce is not a requirement for the program. Most of our people do work, um, you know, or have, and like I say, I call it life commitments because people have different reasons. Some people take care of the kids, take care of parents, um, just cannot uh, relocate, cannot go face to face, whatever the reason is, you know, we're here. And, and so you don't have to be working. Some students come right after they graduate in May and start in the fall. So you don't have to be part of the workforce. We would be glad to um, you know, help you get back into the workforce in the area that you would like. All right, let's see if any other questions come in. I'm not seeing any more. So if you have something on your mind, please share and we can, we can help you right now. And again, our contact information is on the screen. So if you want to reach out to Dr. Peterson afterwards with another question, um, if you come up with it later, we'd be happy to connect with you. Absolutely. I think about things usually at night when I go to sleep, that's when questions come up. But we're here um, to make sure, you know, both for you and for us. If you have questions, please ask the questions before you even apply so that we know you know for sure that we are where you want to be because we want you here. We would love to have you here. 
um, but also only if we are the appropriate place um, for you. So you have my information, you have my email, please do not hesitate. Um, I don't know all the answers, but I can find out if there's questions I don't know. I'm happy to um, answer all your questions there. And my team is amazing too. So if you have any questions that I can answer, like I anything financial, send them to Irene. Anything admission, Fiorella, so we're good. And I guess as we're waiting for more questions, I'm going to I'm going to share a question which I know I hear a lot from 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 prospective students coming into the program. And that's um, how to complete um, the, the practicum requirements. Um, I think I think one of the most common questions that we've heard in the past is um, can the requirement be met? through through their like employer um so i don't know if maybe dr peterson um maybe can you sh can you shed light yeah. a little bit into what those requirements would be absolutely so our requirement really it is it is a 200 hours practicum that can be stretched over two semesters um if it can be met through your employment if you have three years full-time experience in public health it has to be experience in public health um, you can request an exemption. We would have to replace the three credits if you get, if it's approved, um, you put it in a portfolio, how you met the competencies that you selected. We know about community documentation. We get it reviewed. If approved, we replace it with another a course. But many people don't have that. Um, so it is, it is time consuming. It is 200 hours. If you're working currently in a public health setting, we work with you. If you don't, even if you don't have three years, um, to, to make sure to see if you can complete it at your site. You know, maybe something in addition to where you work, you know, what your regular duties are. Um, but, but I do, to be completely transparent, any MPH program, it is, like I said, a practice degree. And that is a requirement from the accrediting body that we do complete um, the practicum. We work with you. you. Like I said, you can have 30, you know, 30 weeks. We can stretch it out so that it's not heavy um, on, on um, your schedule, but it has to be completed. With COVID, we had a lot of, this is another thing that people have, we had a lot of remote experiences available and that has dwindled too. You know, it's a people um, profession. I have two students now that secured completely remote, um, but most do not. You know, they can have hybrid, they go sometimes, but there's things they can do um, on their own time but it's a mixture. Mostly Great. we have people graduating every week. We have like, I think 18 going. So it is, it is a stretch, but people do it every day. It works really well and they, they learn a lot and it helps them actually uh, get in positions. Um, you know, kind of like that thing that, you know, they need experience, you need experience to get a job, but then you need a job to get experience. So I think that's one of the reasons that See if requires it so you can apply what you've learned and have some experience. Well, I'm talking um, about I have a question. I have a question. I have a question right there. Yeah. How involved? So the way, however, the faculty in finding place to complete. So this is a good question. We do not place you. Um, public health is very broad. Um, if I placed you, like I tell students, it might not match your interest. Happy to. It might not match your time. Um, just went through another information session about, I'm like, we can do this, but you might not, uh, it may, might not be a fit. So we're there, we approve your plan, we talk to the employer if, um, if you can't find, and, and people are all over the world. So there's different, uh, different sites, but all over where they want to do it. So we talk to you, we have information sessions, um, we guide you, let you look around. It starts always, but where do you want to be? You know, what do you want to do? What is the idea? Why do you go in public health? Let's look around in the area that you live that you'll be able to go to the site to. You know, in the same thing, I go on Google and find places with students. What are you interested in? Some people are interested in uh, working with youths in any area. Some people want to work in HIV. You know, that's, that's the challenge, not and a good challenge. That's the interesting part about our profession you might want to work with a specific disease, specific population in a specific site. So it always starts with where really you have to do soul searching. Where, what do you want to do? You know, and from there, like I said, we look around where you're at um, instead of sending you across the country. Um, so where you're at, look what there is. 
and it starts with you and us contacting the site. And usually it's you. I like the killing this horse too, because it is, I don't know your time. And like I said, the interest. So it is kind of like applying for a job. We guide you. We talk to the site. We create, you create an education plan that we go back and forth, making sure the activities that you select to do at the site meet seed competencies, the five that you have to select five out of 22. Um, and then you actually um, complete it. And students have been successful. And this is, I think, what, very important, successful in getting positions from actually their practicum. So students are, then we're there to guide you, but the work really, you know what you like. So I hope I answered that. And if not, Joel, just join back in, ask me to clarify. There's another question. I've been a registered respiratory therapist working in trauma care. Six years, I have tons of patient care experience, patient issues. No, um, we, very important, very important uh, job. There is a difference, right? That's clinical. Um, it's a common question. We have physicians that ask the same questions and nurses. Really, it is the generalist. It is the competencies um, that you have. And it has to be not patient, uh, clinical um, related. It has to really be more population health. The programs, the MPHs are really addressing um, that. And if you have more specific, if you have more specific questions about it, happy to go into it. Anything else I can answer for you all? Let's see, let's see what other questions may come in. But you do have our email, they do have my emails right there. Any question that you have, I'm really good with emails, just should be an email, like I said, if you wanna Zoom, if you wanna talk, happy to. Oh, wait. Um, no, doesn't have to be three years of public. The question is, does the three years of public health experience have to be consecutive to replace the practicum? No, it has to be three years full time public health experience, though. You know, you just go back and document, you create your portfolio, then we review it, make sure that, you know, you have everything documented. Um, but it does not have to be consecutive. Is there a full list of courses that I can look at? Um, is this wait? Yeah, is this what you're looking for? I'm happy if you email me. I'm happy to send you this in the plan of study format in a format that you can look at. But these are our courses. And Jewel, regarding the courses, you you can uh, hop on our website and look at the courses, or you can email Dr. Peterson, and, and you know you you can the course descriptions in the catalog. Absolutely, if you go to FIU Graduate Catalog, all those course descriptions are there. But if you send me, I can even give you the send you the list with the numbers of the courses. But yeah, no, that is the full list. It's fifteen courses that you have to take. That is the list. All right, let's see if there's any more questions that come in. I'm just going to go ahead and put our contact information up on the screen again. I've been working in HIV. Okay, so it's it's what you do in those areas. Let me, um, the question is, I've been working in HIV AIDS field for over 20 years. So would that count? Don't know, cannot, um, cannot answer that. So there is 22 we call competencies objectives, 22 um, areas that your program prepares you for. Uh, data analysis, program planning, um, uh, leadership. So there is 22 of those that your program meets. And for the accrediting body, when you do, so for practicum, you have to select five of those and you have to meet, have activities that you demonstrate so that you're proficient in those competencies. So it's not a shadowing like, you know, an undergrad, it really is that you've been able to do it. So even for people who do practicum, it's not where they do it. You could work at a health department and not meet them because it's not where you work, but it's, the, it's what you do at the side. We've had people working at WIC where for some, they were able to be exempted and some were very narrow what they did and what wasn't. So really that is where you make the case, you know, before you even put effort into the portfolio, um, we would talk to you, we would ask you for your CV, look at on your CV, on your, uh, what all 
you have listed. And then we're going to have to get documentations, your job descriptions that you had, your supervisor, so we can verify. Um, and it's not like it's just verifying the employment, everything good. And then you're going to have to really write a paper about, you know, probably about two pages for each one of the competencies and document what you did, because we're giving you an exemption retroactively. So really it is you documenting, telling us that what you did, what did you do, which competency it addressed. And we evaluated, there's three of us that look at it and we evaluate, make sure that what you wrote down and what you did really demonstrate comp that um, proficiency in that competency. So not that I don't want to answer, but HIV AIDS is, is the same as if you're a nurse. Um, it depends what you do. Anything that you did has to be public health related and you have to, like I said, meet five of those um, areas. Uh, and if you have questions, yeah, let me just say this. If you have questions before, you, you know, before applying in general, there's nothing I won't be able to exempt. Um, you're going to have to put the pork in and, and take class. I won't be able to exempt uh, before you apply, but I will be able to tell, give you an idea and go, okay, this looks like, yeah, based on what you're telling me, yeah. Or I can tell you, oh, no, 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 that's not going to work. If that influences your decision, I think it's better for you to know ahead of time so that, you know, if you make a decision, hopefully you decide to join us. But if you decide that it's not right for you, you know, before you invest um, resources in, in a program that is not right for you. So just feel free to shoot me an email. We'll talk. Well, if there's no other question, it's been a very nice talking to you all. And thank you all, Dr. Forbes, your first one. Thank you for joining us last minute. Fiorella, Susie, and Jose, Carla, as always. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. thank you, everybody. And connect with us. We look forward to you becoming an FIU graduate Panther. All right. Thank Have a great all. evening, all. Good night. Good night. Enjoy. Good night.